This morning on Al's Book Club for Kids, Where the Mountain Meets the Moon. A young girl named Min Lee is fascinated by Chinese folk, folk tales, sets out on a remarkable journey in search of the old man of the moon. Grace Lin wrote Where the Mountain Meets the Moon. And our book club kids are Tatiana Perry, Delroy Brockett, Danielle Azalina, Ian Goldstein, and Treasure Melvin. Good to see you guys. Hello. Hi. Hi. And it's nice to meet you, Grace. Nice to meet you, too. You know, it's a beautiful book. First of all, it's beautifully written, beautifully illustrated. And, and you grew up reading reading Chinese folk tales. Mm -hmm. Actually, when I was younger, uh, I was very ashamed of my culture. And I wasn't Why was that? I grew up in upstate New York where there was not a very diverse community. So I was the only Asian in my classroom. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I was, except for my sisters, I was the only Asian in my whole school. So a lot of the time I spent... Uh, trying to forget that I was Asian or trying to ignore my heritage. But your mom gave you some of these mm -hmm. to, to try to help bolster that. Yeah, so she knew that um, I loved books. So her way of kind of sneaking the culture in was to give me these Chinese fairy tale books. And then you had a life-changing experience when you took a, a trip to China when you were in college. Yeah, I went to China and I actually got a great opportunity to, tr to uh, travel to Hong Kong and Taiwan. And it was there that these stories that I read when I was younger came to life and then all of a sudden kind of jumbled together and became the book. So, so Where the Mountain Meets the Moon, has that been a, a dream of yours? It's kind of a... I guess so. You could say that. It, it was kind of a, a dream that came to me while I was traveling. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's, let's start off with our book club kids, because I know they've got some questions. Tatiana, what's your question for Grace? What made you decide for the valley to be called Fruitless Mountain? Why did I decide that the valley should be called the Valley of Fruitless Mountain? Yes. Well, the valley is called the Valley of Fruitless Mountain because the mountain that, in the very beginning, nothing grows on it because it is actually the sad, broken heart of a uh, jade dragon whose children have left. So nothing grows on it, so that's why it's fruitless. It's, there's no fruit. There's no fruit. <laughs> no fruit for you. Ian, what's your question? Was there a specific Chinese folk tale that you, you decided to write the book because of? Was there a specific Chinese folk tale that I decided to write the book because of? Well, the whole book is actually very, very roughly based on a folk tale called Olive Lake which is a very, very um, old, obscure folk tale. And what's different is that in the book, it's a young girl that goes on a journey. And in Olive Lake, it was a young man that went off to see the god of the West. So I changed it quite a bit, but it was based on Since you're a young lady, you figured, yes. why not? OK. <laughs> <Definitely>. <laughs> Danielle, how about you? Did the moral of the stories or story um, come from a real life experience? Did the moral of the story come from a real life experience? Um, yes and no. I think uh, when I was writing this book, actually, uh, my late husband was passed away. And while that was happening, I, I realized I was really, really grateful and very, very thankful for all the time that we had together. And so that was the moral of the story, to be thankful for the love that you have. OK, Delroy, what do you have? What questions you're, you um, have? By the way, I like the book. Now, my question <laughs> is that when the goldfish man gave Minley a, um, a goldfish, he said that it was good luck. Why? What do you mean by a goldfish is good luck in the book? What do I mean that a goldfish is good luck in the book? Well, in Chinese her in Chinese culture, a goldfish actually translates a goldfish in a bowl actually translates to gold and jade in, t in your house. So uh, a goldfish is actually a very lucky Chinese auspicious symbol. So that's why they like to have goldfish in their house. And and treasure, what's your question? Uh, my question is, how similar are you to Minli? How similar am I to Min Lee? Well, uh, that's a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm similar in, in a point. Uh, I think Min Lee is very earnest, and she always tries her very best, and I think that's kind of like me. But hopefully she's not goody two-shoes. I hope I'm not goody two-shoes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Tatiana? I said my question. I know, but you, I, you look like there's something else you want to ask. <laughs> yes. Um, did you enjoy writing this book? Did I enjoy writing this book? Yes, I loved writing this book. Um, this book, a lot of children ask me, what's my favorite book that I've written and illustrated? And I say, this one is my absolute favor favorite, because um, not only does it have the writing that I love, in the interior there's uh, colored illustrations, which is very unusual for a novel like this. And so this book, I got to do both things that I love, which is writing and illustrating. Well, Grace Lynn and our book club kids, thank you so much. Again, the book is Where the Mountain Meets the Moon. Now, time to reveal our next book club choice. This time, two oldies but goodies. 2010 marks the 80th anniversary